was ready to make it a branch. So I went, I went back and tried to play some piano. Good. What would you like? And not just for one day, thank you, but two, three, four, five. I'm doing it. I'm enjoying it now. Fun. What did it oh take? It took seeing that um, I was programmed. <laughs> Talk programmed. about it. Come on, well, let me hear. You're a programmer. I was programmed, baby. He was programmed. I was a zombie programmee. <laughs> Actually, you and I have had many midwife talks. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but I would think of all the scenes we've gone through, that uh, that one qualified as probably the most, what would you call it, um, uh, textbook, mm. if you could call the Orange Sutra that. That was closest to the model of all of them. Uh, uh, my, uh, just in brief, uh, my father teaching me how to make plastic models, the plastic models used to get at hobby shops, so battleships and planes and things like this, which I was already doing, and Pierre asked the perfect question. I totally forgot. I had already been making these things, but my father had to teach me how to do it right with patience and failed miserably, giving me this, uh, well, what it comes down to is... Uh, I, uh, um, thou shalt not succeed in completing anything that you want to do which is important to you, to me, um, with excellence. Oh boy, what a great lesson. Yeah. Huh. Thou shalt not, wow. baby. And yet, all the while maintaining he's doing exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. All the way? And I bought it all the while maintaining that he's doing exactly the opposite. I'm here to teach you how to do all of that, right? And something else that you added, I think, Pierre, that was really beautiful, too, was um, part of that commandment is uh, with independence, doing it alone. Perfectly happy working alone up until that <laughs> point. You won't have any of that either. That's very simple. Mm -hmm. So... Let me ask you a question. Sir... I have heard it asked, <clears throat> what are the difficulties in trying to do midwifery on yourself? <laughs> that was the top, part of last week's topic, was it not? <laughs> Why is it that whatever came up couldn't have come up? And I believe the person who asked that is sitting across from us right now. No. <laughs> and it was a good question. Really? I believe you answered it. <laughs> Um, but I'm not sure it was to his satisfaction. It certainly was to mine. The answer is um, because by definition you're not going to be able to come up with the question necessary to see you, what you want to see because your questions are all going to be framed through that lens that you were, you know, given. You were already believing the pathologos that you thought was true. Yep. So how can you raise a question? Yeah, if you see the world that whole way, yeah. uh, how can you, how can you step outside of that? And I, I think one of the things that we came to last week was, or maybe Josh made the point, is there's a beauty to it in the sense that it requires some degree of community. Uh, you need at least one other person to do that. It's very important. You know what? That really, the, in principle. And that, yeah. See, in principle, it raises the issue of how significant in, in any kind of human <clears throat> growth is dialogue. Yeah. And what about inner dialogue? Wait, 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 let me just think about that. <laughs> that felt, you know, when he asked that, it just, you know, sometimes Pierre or one of us asks something, and you feel like someone just, just, roll the depth charge off the side of the cruiser <laughs> and it's just going down, down, down. <laughs> so part of that descent into profundity, I'm trying to imagine 
I need my mind went in the opposite direction immediately. Like, how far would we get without it? No, no. There's, certainly, there is a value in doing it alone. The question is, can it complete? And can it com can yeah. not only complete but compete? Compete against the pathologos. No, it's 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 like asking, um, can a flashlight compete against a box it's inside of? Ooh. Well done. Sure, you can see a lot of stuff, and it's good stuff, but to transcend out of that box, you're going to need something else. No. So tell us, what was it like playing piano? A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Very joyful. Also, uh, because I'm, well, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm more, it seems I'm more dedicated to excellence. So in the places where um, I would have given up and said, well, that's enough for today, I push on further. Um, in the places where I hit a lesson with the fellow uh, DVDs, which seems boring and I would have skipped, I don't skip it now. I, uh, I say, well, you know, master it before you move on to the next, even though it's not your favorite. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, no, I was going to sit over there. Okay. Are you sitting there? I was, but... Okay, go ahead. Who's this? Nobody. Nobody. You were going to complete that thought? I'm just I'm just fishing around in my head for anything additional. Um, I find I practice with more frequency and for longer periods. Um, and I'm noticing that um, the songs that I play, I'm more interested. I'm I'm actually seeing uh, the theory behind them more. Um, uh, and also uh, additional distractions that used to present themselves such as well I also have a jazz piano course over here and I also have another book over here uh, what I used to do is just jump around among all of these different books I've got and um, what I've decided is to uh, it's not that I can't open them and have a little fun, but I've decided that that was a different game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stay on this one course, this 52-week, year-long course. I'm going to stay on it and finish it mm -hmm. before I go on to those others. Because I want to do this, because to do the others is a nice way to sort of derail the train. Um, by making it look like you're doing a lot, you're accomplishing two or three courses at once, but then you run out of gas and give up. So instead, I'd rather pace myself and focus with excellence on the, the current one I'm on. Would you agree, though, that one can pursue excellence in a variety of ways? <laughs> Another depth charge off the side of the <laughs> This is available. And a variety is it? of ways. Yes. Hello, cutie. There you are. More yeah, kinds. More variety. Uh -huh. Yeah. It was a yes no question. Yeah, but I, I, I was seeing it asked at multiple levels. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And trying to decide on which one I want to answer. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> oh, good, good. Oh, by the way, did you mention the, the kind of excellence you want to achieve in a certain kind of study that you haven't mentioned? Hmm. Are we talking about... Um, well, not. I just uh, guess. Uh, additional ones besides piano, such as Plato or Liszt or anything else? That's correct. 
pick both. Uh, I have not yet mentioned those. Yeah. Young. Were you and thinking of mentioning? Until, yeah, I was actually. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll wait. Um, well. Actually, I I realized that I've never actually explicitly set goals for myself. Mm. <laughs> That's the very question I was wondering about. And so I, I talked with Kathy Wilson this week about it, and we chit-chatted over a cup of coffee on it, and it felt, to, it seemed to me that I'd like to teach and write. But yeah. those, are, those are ones that, oh, look at this. Look. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I know what he's thinking of, the shoemaking. <laughs> well, the problem. Writing about shoemaking? Yeah. Is that, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I've often noticed she has that deep interest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's one of the greater challenges, yeah. Yeah. isn't it? <coughs> well, the problem I've always had with that. I, I, everybody always asks me, are you a teacher? And I always say, I, I think so, but I, I'm not currently in that profession. But when I think uh, of teaching, I ask Did myself, Did they ask of you what? In, of what? Yeah. Well, that's the same question I always ask myself. What the heck would I teach? Um, and I go around and around on that. Um, much of what is being taught in universities, on the one hand, I don't want to pursue teaching um, or lecturing. Well, on it. Teaching what is taught in the universities, on the one hand, but, but on it's a men day construction. <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, there might be other ways around the problem. One, How about other things? Um, uh, one is to recognize that there is no teaching going on in universities. <laughs> right. But as soon as teaching happens again and again, I've seen teachers get booted. For good reason. <laughs> well, it would be a short but intense career. It 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 uh, it's usually parents, even of adult college students. Parents get really itchy scratchy about light bulbs turning on in their kids, yeah. and administrators respond, and next thing you know, you're out. Not to mention that most of what's being taught is not is not meaningful to me, or I think to anybody. Um, Conclusion. So I thought, well, two two ways I can think about of it. One is to try to take a field like I did major in cultural no. anthropology, and you can think in, in fields like cultural anthropology, um, art, um, literature. These things are so liberal that you can kind of work your way around them, they give you a lot of leeway and you could sort of sneak in a, uh, a more insightful perspective as part of them. Now, why don't you just tell us what it is you'd like to teach and yes. we'll worry about yes. university, college, or institute, or well, bar room. The, uh, yes. the, the, the truth is I, I really would rather not teach anything other than philosophy at this point. But I know how philosophers in this group trying to get into the teaching profession, how far they get. <laughs> they don't. Uh, they don't. Well, I'll be actually <laughs> thinking, but... Yeah. Uh, well, then, yeah, exactly. I could ask Bill how it's gone, but... Um, He's only teaching logic, isn't he? Yeah. Right? He doesn't all, he hasn't Logic. always, though. Is he now only teaching logic? I think he taught intro for a while. By the way, you... Uh, <clears throat> change the subject, did you notice that? <coughs> I guess I didn't. From what to what? Were we not on the subject of excellence? Yes, we were. Yeah. Now, should we go back on that one or not? <clears throat> uh, it's one of all of our favorites. I'm up. Oh, you good, bet. good, good. Let's get to excellence. In that uh, <clears throat> things you were mentioning that you have an interest in, yeah. did you mention the one that is most challenging to you? Well, uh, 
said, the ones that are the most challenging, I think, are teaching and writing. Because when I thought about doing them this week, it doesn't, it doesn't come close to the problem. <laughs> it's so far off the target, it's missed the hay bale. Whoa! <laughs> Behind the target. Doesn't Old come close. Say, so, how are you doing with Lisp? I know you're going to ask about that. I. <laughs> Why is that? Because <clears throat> we've talked about it before. Um, I'm not so sure I'm really interested in programming anymore. Is it, we're not talking about programming. Well, that's what Lisp is. No, uh, it's only secondarily involved in yes. programming. Well, uh, didn't you say you were writing a paper on Lisp yourself? Yeah. Uh, how's that going? <laughs> Fine. That's well, I, I told you I would be willing. I really was not just willing. I was <clears throat> no, look waiting it. with bated breath look to, to read it because you've always uh, you? seen more in it than I do. I don't know what that is. Well, wouldn't you agree the interesting thing about it it is that it is a total new approach <coughs> to learning. A total new, I'm sorry. Approach to approach learning. learning. Um, are you talking about the specific book that I gave you or about Lisp itself? Both. That is, the, the content, the particular content mm -hmm. to which one may apply it, mm -hmm. is not the subject of Lisp but rather the relationships that must exist for within it. Therefore, it's homogeneous and blank of content. The terms are homogeneous, yeah. yeah. Therefore, it's in sharp contrast with analogy when you're taking it in terms of ideas. And I think, Pierre, that's that really just goes shoots straight to the core of why I'm less interested in it these days. It's homogenous terms. It's just numbers. It's not. It's there's, it's devoid of meaning. There's no content in it. It's, uh, yeah, there's no you, analogy. Uh, yeah, wouldn't you agree though? You can look at the universe in two ways. In terms of homogeneity and hetero. Right. Oh. Right. Yep. Yep. Are you saying there's a possibility of doing um, functions and recursions on heterogeneous terms? Mm-hmm. Would you like to talk more about that? Not yet. <laughs> so we're right back where we were before. No, no, see, it's the, it, it, it's, it is the complementary Right. It, it, it only talks about all possible relations. Is there a, a meaningful logic just in relations empty of content? Is there also a way of talking about relations in respect to content? Yes. Well, sure. Yeah. There, there are whole algebras set up to talk yeah. about those kinds of things. Right. Well, algebra doesn't really deal with relations as much as, as Lisp. Lisp formally deals with it. No, but there are, I'm saying there are algebras of relations, like, uh, oh, what do they call it? Uh, on the top of my head, recording, I can't remember it. I want to say semiotic theory or something like this, but I, I used to study it. I've forgotten it all. <laughs> okay. So you're out of it, though, now. Yeah. Now, did you get beyond page 78? Yeah, I've moved forward with it. You bet. And what I like about that book, this is a book I gave Pierre that uh, that I also have a copy of. It's called The Little Schemer. Scheme is a dialect of the Lisp language, programming language. Um, and what's nice about it is um, that book is is it essentially it's the entire book is question answer question answer. And you can go through the entire book without a computer in your hands. You just work it out on paper. And uh, it's, it's, it's almost Socratic in that mm -hmm. sense. 
Uh, it's, so it's a, it's entirely different. It, the format is radically, radically better. Mm -hmm. And I think I told you, Pierre, also that for a while I gave it up and then I came back to it. And with most books on anything that I have to, uh, that I leave and come back to, I have to kind of go back a few chapters and sort of review and then sort of catch mm -hmm. up again and then get that get that wave of thought moving forward. That, but with this book, I didn't have to do that. That's right. And uh, for me, that tells me, I mean, in other words, I just sort of, I did a little review for maybe two or three minutes, and I went, oh, yeah, that's where I am, and then boom, I just left, started taking off. Where I, and, yeah, so I worked through it. Sometimes in the morning, I'll, I'll do a couple pages with some coffee and so forth. Uh, but that tells me that it's, um, it's probably not in the category of memorization. No. It's in the category of learning. Mm -hmm. in a sense, in the platonic sense, that is remembering. And uh, when you learn how or remember how to think recursively, you realize this is, uh, there's something real to this. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's easy to remember mm -hmm. when you go back to it after mm -hmm. it, because it's part of you. It's recursive, it. right? And that's why I always, that's the beauty of Lisp that I always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But I think because I, <clears throat> oh, and, and, you know, and people who have been taught Lisp in high school and college uh, claim they, they had a much better computer science. It was a much easier way to get through computer science because when they sure. were all the other languages, which are inferior and difficult to understand, C, Java, Algol-based stuff, Fortran, uh, they... Uh, they easily understood what was going on because they understood the, the principles behind it mm -hmm. in a better way. Mm -hmm. So the language is inferior, but you don't have to believe this is the way all computer science has to be. But I guess I lost a vision at some point of, of like where to go from here into meaning, into mm -hmm. content, into something that changes a person's life. Mm -hmm. And that's why I find philosophy much more interesting. Yeah. If you told me yeah. I could find a, uh, or start a field or, after your articles, uh, break off a branch into uh, philosophical computing or something, I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah. Okay. See, now that you put that aside, <clears throat> what yes. other model are you going to go for in which you can test your comprehension in terms of systems of excellence. Uh, you mentioned music. Music, and I'm, I'm doing that anyway. Yeah. What else more challenging is there but Plato? Yeah, but... <clears throat> Are you talking about something you can actually no, no, get a no, paycheck no, on? No, no, you see, Barbara holds the position that it is not clear what it is to understand Plato because she offers this, this rather curious position. Is it not true that of the number of Neoplatonists, and believe me, she has a total beautiful list of all the Neoplatonists that you would ever consider in the terms of the history. She's got this splendid list. I might have found it on Wikipedia under... Neo well, she found it under a rock. Deep research, deep, deep research. <laughs> <laughs> and she raises the point that why is it they do not all agree? And so she was advancing the notion yes. that there must be some level of interpretation going on since they come to different conclusions about the same thing. Yep. Therefore, she very nobly raised the question, perhaps there isn't any way to avoid such things as personal and private interpretations. The difficulty is, I was aghast at that, but then she threw in the next point and said, Pierre, are you sure your, your idea that all interpretations follow from some pathologos? Well. And Pierre said, as you might imagine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going to try to gain some degree of excellence in this study of Plato, which one are you going to go for? 
Are you going to go for Proclus is understand now that Iamblichus, Numius, uh, Damascus, uh, Plotinus? Like they're all different. Not, not that they may not have some interesting insights along the side, but it looks like there isn't any excellence in it if it's all interpretation, except interpretation of excellence. No, no. <clears throat> that wouldn't follow. No. How would you put it, Barbara? Well, I thought you made your point with reference to uh, very, the very striking example of Proclus's teacher's teacher, didn't you? Perhaps I have a bad memory. Serenius? No, the other one starts with I. I am Lucas. I am Lucas, thank you. So I thought you made the point with, well, we were talking about, the, all of us saw, who were in the Parmenides group at that time, that Proclus draws his way of understanding certain passages in the Parmenides from uh, Damasius, who in turn, or, and or, his teacher, what was it? I am Lucas. Thank you. I am Lucas. <laughs> and um, so Pierre was putting forth, really was putting forth the idea that if we looked up some texts that contained um, the use of alto, the use of logos in particular, since logos is the issue here, what has passed on that's actually the teaching of Parmenides, right, that in fact it looks like that that guy, what was his name? <laughs> I am Lucas. I am Lucas kind of has, gener he's the cause of a whole generation after generation after generation of interpretation. He's the cause, because nobody's going back and really reading closely the original work. This was Pierre's thesis, by the way, which I agreed to when I saw some of the quotes we were mm -hmm. talking about. So, we in those red books, for one thing, of um, mm -hmm. the uh, Prometheus Trust, you know, they have one Demasius mm -hmm. on the, the Platonic commentaries, and they have one um, Iamblichus on, what was it, the other one down? Anyway, they have they have. Philebus. Mm, thank you. I'm Iamblichus on the Philebus, and the TLG does its usual little job of sorting out um, the different and telling you where to find certain certain quotes. And those quotes, you know, we found they were not translating. Sometimes it's the use, it's the case of not translating self at all, not as a pronoun, not as an intensifier. You know the very person who, you could, they say you can use auto for that. They want to say it's like intensifies that you're pointing at someone or something. It's two, two, two quotes we had. We had auto, to, fro, name, right? And from the Philebus, auto, to, fro, name, all the same case. Fro, fro name, articular infinitive, for, from phronesis. And the other one was auto, to, so, fro, name. And in both those cases, they didn't bother to translate the auto at all. Mm. So, what would it be translated as? It does. So. Well, the way no, it didn't translate. Well, Gina, come on. What's for me? Come on. Well, how would you put your hat in the ball? Okay. You know, this is not. No, well, uh, you were. You don't remember things, so I don't remember pronasis. I just don't. Level how about So pro name. That's temperance, right? So. And phronesis is the word for wisdom or intelligence. Okay, so self wisdom. Yeah, or okay. wisdom. Yeah. yeah, it depends. You know, phronane can be phronane is the you know comes from the word friend, which is the diaphragm. So there's kind of a connection between that chi or chi or whatever it is center or the hara and phronesis, right? And therefore, with um, What's the other one besides? Hmm. Prajna. Isn't, isn't that the one that connects? It's the other one. There's two in the... One of them is Jariki. It connects with Jariki because Jariki oh, is a power. Oh, yes. Quite true. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that... But anyway, so phronane is that... Phronesis is the function of that. And so some people translate it really high. Wisdom, mind, intelligence. And some people take a very low <coughs> and call it prudence, mm -hmm. which is really a bad translation. Mm -hmm. Give it call it what? Prudence. 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 So. Um, we don't like being prudes. We don't like being prudes. <laughs> no. And we don't even like well, moving from our hara and being prudent. We don't. So 
you know, and that was the translation by, I think Westering was yeah, that one, wasn't Westering. it? And because those red books are either, and the other one was by Dylan. It was like <laughs> the translation that is hmm. of the Platonic commentaries. Can you imagine? Prometheus Trust coming out with a volume translated by Dylan. Where were their heads at? That's what I want to know. I think they went for prestige. No. Mm-hmm. No? Is it okay. English? English. Is it? I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Well, I forget. Yes. I forget it, it's Irish. From, but yeah, oh. it's this thing at the Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland. Okay. okay. Um, the platonic system mm-hmm. we got there. Irish. Like, uh, mm-hmm. 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 Irish Catholic. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us, you were raising, Pierre was saying the conversation turned around the idea of interpretation proceeding from the Pathologos. So mm-hmm. we've looked at now uh, an exemplar of someone functioning, in fact, to pass down as a transmission on the highest level, right? An interpretation of the highest material. And, and we haven't looked to see if we can de- discern I didn't. There was no discussion of whether it was a pathologos or not, right? So. Well, we couldn't. Well, I mean, you can't tell. Can't well, for one thing, so I sent away with a cut for a couple of volumes. No. De Mis- the it's called De Mysteria and uh, De Anima. So on the mysteries and on the soul that are iambicuses. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be a better source, we hope, because the commentary one is fragments. You Don't know. we have that in the <coughs> Thomas Taylor? We don't have the Greek. And we need the Greek to do the oh, auto oh, search. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have one of the books in I don't remember which one in the Thomas Taylor's. So where 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 should this conversation go, Pierre? Well, it's <coughs> what's the next stop? No, no, see, we're still on it. Oh, okay. tie it in. <coughs> and therefore, the question is: Is there a way to find a way of reading Plato that is in principle not an interpretation? <clears throat> hmm, that should be. Yeah. You know. See, the the old days they had a, a, a copy of the second version of the Parmenides. <laughs> really? Yeah. And what version I don't remember your saying anything about that. We talked only well, about Well it was I found it under a rock and it was kind of dirty. I see. And I had a brush yeah. off the dirt. You know, the, I kn- all it did is raise a couple of questions. What were, what were those? On what basis can you say that Plato must be interpreting Parmenides? Oh, I like it. Hmm. Must be. On what basis? By virtue of the fact that he doesn't have high enough vision, or by virtue of the fact that we've seen it in the text, or both? Not, I always go for both. Hmm. I always like that about you. We're, what is it that would lead you to believe that he's interpreting if it's a recollection through three different people? Could that be, is that what you're suggesting? Well, according to the note I had, I picked up the <clears throat> under a rock and said, notice the difference between his poem and what uh-huh. is reported by Plato as Parmenides and the vast difference between the two shows it must be Plato's interpretation of Parmenides. The Parmenides dialogue is Plato's interpretation of Parmenides. Oh. Yeah, that's what this note said that I found under a rock. Or that Parmenides... Wow, that's interesting. ...improved his vision since his vision but, or the poem was... But you was still have to tie it in with the idea. Go ahead. ...of interpretation. Go ahead, do it your way. Well, you'd have to tie it in that. Will, will that avoid? Will that avoid any conclusion or moving towards, which is everything would, is interpretation? Uh, hmm. That's the issue on the hmm. table. Well, I thought the. I thought the. I'm assuming that the discussion of the dialogue itself is to avoid interpretation. Um, In the symposium, Apollodorus is saying he's word perfect. So they take great pride in 
in holding on to the words. But you not can be word per perfect even on someone's interpretation. Well, yeah, but that was what I was thinking they were doing, that they're trying to be word perfect on the actual understand uh, the actual event or what was being uh, voiced. You, you have to stay on the subject. How will this avoid the issue of interpretation is the issue. Your answer is they are word perfect being able to record it. Answer, you can be word perfect about someone's interpretation such as Iamblichus's understanding or interpretation of Plato and be able to recall it with perfect accuracy that doesn't avoid the issue of whether or not it, it itself is an interpretation or not. So recalling somebody's exact words would be a bad interpretation? I if the original that. was an interpretation. Oh, if the original, but we're assuming that Parmenides itself is not. Well, we haven't assumed But we that. also have, it's, you know, the, the whole idea of the translations, which are complicated, and that can be also interpreted, how what you were to use in its translation, so that complicates I thought we translations or interpretations. I thought we weren't assuming. I thought you raised the question about whether Plato's Parmenides could be an interpretation, given the Parmenides poem, an interpretation by Plato of the Parmenidean mm -hmm. position. Yeah, and I and I question that because I, my understanding is that the interp that Parmenides' vision was when he was very young, when he came to. Athens to the Panathenaea, he was 65 years old. So I'm thinking that given that difference, could you say that Plato was interpreting? I would hold it and hold it as a thought to look at the differences between the poem and Parmenides, but I'd also have to respect that there was a difference <coughs> about 60 years. But had they mm, one and in the poem, he doesn't have oneself. That's exactly the problem, isn't it? That's it. Mm. Well, but it was Parmenides in the Parmenides that has oneself. Also true. But that's Plato's representation of Parmenides, and now we're raising the point of whether that is itself an interpretation. Oh, well, I'm I'm a. Uh, Oh, I see. So you're saying that that's Plato's interpretation. I was assuming that that was a recollection of a discussion and not an interpretation, but that's okay. So I presume you're together now with the mystery. Is there a problem with me not being, you know, I have questions and I thought that it was, <coughs> if it's a recollection and it's word perfect, would it be an interpretation? The use of the word interpretation isn't necessary yet unless you want to ask whether the original material was an interpretation of some author or not. That's the issue. Mm. So you're saying that Plato is um, could be interpreting Parmenides based on his poem. Well, if he is, then would we say that, uh, is that an interpretation if you take something of Parmenides' poem and raises it to a higher level? If he raises it to a higher level and changes the content by the very point you agreed to that it lacks the idea of the, either the idea of the one or the oneself. In either case, he's not just uh, adding to it, he's, in, he's adding to it in a fundamental way, and that's called an interpretation since it wasn't in the original. Okay, that's how you see it. That's one way of looking at it. Though. What, what? I said I'm not in agreement all, because I see it as a recollection, and I have a hard time with saying that a recollection is an interpretation. 
We are not saying that recollection is an interpretation, Jim. One can have an, any number of recollections. The issue of interpretation is whether someone is doing something with the material that you are recollecting, not the recollection itself. Okay, then you're saying there's a possibility that Plato interpreted Parmenides and therefore it's only a drama. He put in Plato in this style, Parmenides in this dialogue to communicate an idea and therefore it's not a recollection but it's just a drama of a recollection. So it's not pure. Parmenides didn't do that. I presume you're talking about the original author of the poem. No, I'm talking about the Parmenides and the Parmenides. Plato's Parmenides. Thank you. You have to make that clear. Sure. Plato's Parmenides then is being said that that is not, that's an that because Plato wrote it, therefore it has a possibility of being interpreted. No, it's not because he wrote it, but because he added something to it that is not in the original author of Parmenides' poem. And we're saying that that wasn't something that Parmenides did actually do. You're quite, from the literature we have, that's the issue. Okay, so from the literature, meaning Plato's Parmenides and the poem, just That's those correct. two. Okay, well, if you want to say that, then sure. Sure what? Sure, you can say that Plato's Parmenides interpreted uh, uh, Parmenides. Good. Now we can go back. Now, is there some way to avoid interpretation? Is the issue? Mm -hmm. Recollecting, exactly. <laughs> Well, don't do it. <laughs> a whole bunch of midwifery first. They will, the, the, yeah, they would all need midwifery. Right. <clears throat> but is, it, is there any way to avoid <clears throat> or to see their differences since you're so clear about this principle of interpretation? Right? Obvious. Um, what was the last thing? How to see the differences between the interpretations? Yep. Are there differences? So, how? So the question revolves on how. And I'm not sure entirely at what level you're asking that how. Let's see, the uh, Plato's Parmenides contains a model. The model is very strict, permeates the entire work. Someone may make a commentary on Plato's Parmenides and ignore that fundamental model that is exhibited in Plato's Parmenides. If they ignore it, then they will be interpreting naturally. <coughs> that is an organizing principle and if they ignore it right on two levels one they're not appreciating the point and second they're not employing it since they're not either of those two they're free then to add whatever it is they think is more important than the particular issue at, at the point which is what Plato's, Plato's Parmenides is following a model a logos with great strictness. Now anyone who makes a commentary or writes about, forget the word commentary, who wants to write about Plato's Parmenides and ignores the use of that word in whatever it is they are saying, are ignoring a principal idea in Plato's Parmenides. Ignores the use of that word, are you talking auto? Logos. Or logos. The model. Right? The model. In other words, in Plato's Parmenides is a model for understanding. He's putting it forward. Now there may be other models of, of understanding, but his specifically is following what he calls the Logos. The same Logos runs throughout the whole. Well then, what follows if no, none of the people who followed him focuses on that one thing? They're all interpreting. 
But I thought we were comparing, yeah, it's all interpreting if they're missing that fundamental idea. But what about, what, what, I thought we what, were, what, what, say that again? I said if they miss the fundamental what? idea, then yes, they're interpreting. But you're saying people who follow Plato's Parmenides. I thought we were looking at the poem and comparing that with Plato's Parmenides. We did before. Why are you raising it now? So we're assuming that Plato interpreted Parmenides' poem. That's one way to understand their difference. Yeah. What has that got to do with the point we're on though now? Well, we changed the point. I thought we agreed that Plato and Parmenides' poem, we were looking at it to see if Plato's Parmenides could be interpreting the poem. That's right. We went through that discussion and you agreed that that's a way of understanding the difference between the two. Then we're on this following that discussion with whether it's a way to avoid interpretations and I'm putting forward the idea, yes, there is. There's a strict way of understanding Plato's Parmenides, that is, on the use of the word logos that runs through the entire par Parmenides of Plato. Okay, so you're, you're looking at the idea of logos in terms of anybody who follows Parmenides, Plato's Parmenides. Okay. I would agree there, too. Well, now from this, right. from this one can say, then would it not be important to know precisely what Parmenides, is, Plato's Parmenides' own hypothesis is? Mm -hmm. Since he's going to say he's following, that's what he's following as the principal idea throughout the, the rest of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. If that is true, what is true? That he identifies his own hypothesis as, a, as the departure point that he's going to use in his model. And therefore, for people who ignore that opening statement of Parmenides' his own hypothesis, they are neither following his own thought nor following his model that is utilizing his original hypothesis. But don't we have to ask the question on whether, well, so are we saying that the one thing we'd want to be able to hold to is that Parmenides' statement <coughs> before the hypotheses of his own hypothesis is not an interpretation? Well... Or is it just that we that's all we have to measure anything by? Well, it, it, <clears throat> what, there is nothing to suggest that there's an, something prior to that that we can look at that would allow us to see whether it is or it is not interp an interpretation. Okay. Well, you know, I was thinking too about the distinction you've often made that um, in the description in the symposium of Socrates, that um, there, there's a description given of, I think, of his speeches, that they enravish hmm. the soul, mm -hmm. that they're about, and we were mm -hmm. pack, packers, pack horses, and this is and that. And you once pointed out to me that, that there, there's a measure of the fact that we don't have any actual Socratic dialogue because those things don't happen. People are not mm -hmm. enravished, mm -hmm. and there aren't, those subjects aren't mentioned. In the same way, then, we could say that Plato made this account in hopes <laughs> of uh, capturing the higher vision of higher than his, of Parmenides. Or, uh, in this case, it would be of Socrates. Well, no, I meant in the Parmenides. In, oh, okay. I'm, saying, I'm comparing the descript Plato's description of Socrates, mm -hmm. Plato's, mm -hmm. Plato's dialogue of, mm -hmm. on Socrates and Plato's mm -hmm. dialogues about Parmenides. So I'm just saying, so you're, and it, it seems like that would be a likely way we'd have to see if the one self is adequately explored using the model, unfolded using the model, or if there are any deviations from the model. 
And if so, then we'd say, to that degree, it very possibly could be an interpretation, or a problem with translation, or... See, when you raise the question, is it possible for it to be an interpretation? The oneself and it's... The oneself, because we don't have anything bridging the gap between the poem and the dialogue. No. Do, right? Therefore, there's no basis for making it. Right, so we have to take some things. No, so we can take that as a departure point. Okay. Yeah. See, the idea of the oneself, though, central to Plato's Republic, it isn't just in the Parmenides mm. dialogue. Mm. Like, would you agree there's only one question in the whole training of the Philosopher King? Sure. Arithmetic. Mm -hmm. What after all is the one? No, no. One self. What I was, yeah. So therefore... I don't therefore, think so, but on the... What? But it's, is it Tohen Auto or is it Tohei? It, okay. Yeah, it's okay. there. Well, I mean, I know that it has been translated what is the one in itself, but you're it's saying it. in the Greek there's no in. That's right. Okay. I, just, I don't know why I haven't looked that up. That'd be good to look up. Oh. No. But you can translate it as itself, right? They you often do that. Whenever they get to the idea of self, right. they want to they use want the word the itself. Yeah, right. Just so so we, we're not doing that. The one self. Oh. Therefore, that's, they are consistent republic as primary idea. Primary idea in the Parmenides is the same. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. The thing is, too, so we're not a Kevin, that itself, they have another form that's he, himself, herself, itself. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted to, if Plato wanted to make the point mm -hmm. itself, right. he would go, he would use that a other secondary form. word. Gotcha. He, I think. No. So, but we we can't truly then say that Socrates that Plato is representing Socrates at all. That it's pardon me you, when you use um, the word at all. That's quite a jump. Well, at what point do we have interpretation that we don't know? Because there's some possibly the dialogues that were taking place. Uh, Plato interpreted them just whatever degree he did. Yet you would need evidence for that. Right. And that's the only what's evidence, Jana, that you have, though, is that what Socrates <laughs> is said to have been talked about is not included in Plato's list of dialogues with Socrates as the spokesman. Therefore, it's not a question of interpreting. At least, and not on that basis. So, the ideas that have been talked about, or that have been said about Socrates, is not in anything in Plato. That's what was well said a moment ago by Barbara, and re recollecting certain discussions that took place. Yes. Uh, if that's the case, then the idea of recollection is what if we don't recollect exactly. It's all interpretation. The idea that that's quite a jump, though. Well, that's what's puzzling me because you have Socrates recollecting the day before. I'm assuming that they valued recollection, and in the as I said, the symposium, word being word perfect. So it has nothing to do with whether the, the subject is being an object of interpretation or not, Trina. Well, if it's recollected, would that be interpreted? So Socrates, Pardon. so Plato <clears throat> should have recollected. Would you agree, just in principle, what we mean by interpretation is when you add or subtract something from an existing work? I understand what interpretation is, but then we're saying that because there are these statements by Plato, uh, by Socrates, and those are not in any Plato, therefore Socrates. If Plato added. No, we're not Socrates. saying that Plato added. We're saying that it's possible that he may have added 
Oh, it's po these are all possibilities. Okay. No, well, they can be on good grounds, though, Trina. How are they on good grounds? That these are. Socrates could have had both the, all of the dialogues that are currently listed by Plato, yeah. as well as, and there also exists, pardon me, uh, no thanks, uh, do it again. <clears throat> There's a discussion of Socrates' dialogues that took place according to Plato in the symposium. The list of those dialogues are not included in Plato's writing. It doesn't preclude Socrates, however, having had dialogues such as Plato has included in his list, but they are not mentioned in that list of dialogues that Socrates had. That's as far as you can go. When there is no evidence or something, no conclusion can be made. Well we're raising then that given that there isn't any evidence um, all we can do is compare Parmenides poem with the Parmenides and come up with some conclusions compare, and to see whether compare, the, compare Parmenides. Parmenides poem with the Parmenid, Plato's Parmenides and come up with some conclusions irrespective of who did it, just that there was a difference. And what is that difference, I take it? And right now you're raising the question whether, or raising the issue that Logos is fundamental to the pl Plato's Parmenides. So if we just take that in itself, anybody who leaves that out, would it would be a form of interpretation. It would, if they don't follow his method, which is the Logos, then they are not following his rigorous thinking, and therefore they would be interpreting, since they are leaving something out, and that was the definition of interpretation. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't see how we can then compare, except to raise, to say that, who said what where, just that in Plato's Parmenides, any commentary after him, we'd have to find out whether they are following the model. And if not, and why not? I don't see why the poem would even come into play at this point. Well, then we can drop that comparison, go on with our discussion. As if I'm not following? Pardon me, from what you just concluded, did you not just conclude that therefore there's no point to making any further comparisons with the poem? I thought that's literally what you came to. Well, yes, but you said that we can go on and I'm, it sounds like I missed the point, so I, I'll drop it then. I guess I missed it. No, that isn't, he just said, you 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 came, to you came to a conclusion, so all of we can go on. It it doesn't have anything to do with you missing a point. No, oh, that's right. And we went further than just saying not only the model or the logos, but it presupposes that in that model you have to follow his initial statement. Yes. You have yes. to put them together. Yes. And therefore, if none of these people are doing either, including his original statement, or following the method called the Logos, uh -huh. then they are doing something different. Uh -huh. <clears throat> if they're doing something different, the issue is, why, why do we call it interpretation? If interpretation is, is trying to represent something, and you are ignoring something important in it, in your commentary, mm -hmm. then you are interpreting, since interpreting is either you add or subtracting something essential in the original work. Mm -hmm. Adding or subtracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought for interpretation you only had to add, but no, you can you also subtract. Mm -hmm. So, but, 
Pierre, then, uh, just to, this is just a footnote, but I, I do want to get clear on it. And this model of interpretation, where would you put someone who is not adding anything and is not purposely, I'll add purposely, subtracting anything? They do see everything accurately, no. but only up to a certain point. Mm. And beyond that, they don't see. No. Would you call that interpretation? No. What would you call that? They're stuck. They're stuck. <laughs> so, so in order for us to, so we have two problems when we're looking at any writer who is looking at the Parmenides. We have to discern whether they're, well, one of three things. They either see it, or they're stuck, right. or they're interpreting. Those are the three possibilities. One more. The, the, the issue that comes up, though, is it possible that in the following the model and in using the model, there may be some things that are obscure. Can someone else make it clearer than the original? So even Without distorting the literalness of sure. the statement. Are you saying that one that both persons might see it, but the other explains or discusses it more clearly? Well, I don't know whether you're following what I was doing. No, no, I'm, I'm It's possible that going through, let us parmenides, as you may point to a particular passage and say this is not clear, even if I'm following the model and I'm using the model with great expertise. Oh, in the original work, okay. No, no. Therefore, either the author is not capable of utilizing his own method with expertise, Hmm. And therefore, he has there's a hole in his system right. that someone else may be able to can, can improve upon. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the model can be, in principle, improved upon, mm -hmm. or it's expertly presented and accurately fulfills all the conditions of consistency and compatibility. Hmm. It, it seems to me that's a crucial fourth possibility. Yeah. <clears throat> now. What that raises, though, is whether or not, let's assume we have such a passage, then we can give it back, see, to people who are familiar with the original language and say, is it possible by going back into the original Greek that there is room for that new section being proposed to explain that difficulty? Then that would allow and in a new way of understanding that Greek passage in the classic Greek that whoever translated it didn't see it themselves, but it is in principle capable of being understood in that way. Mm -hmm. In which case, so that's a fifth possibility, yes. a translation issue, yeah. which absolves the author of the fourth mm -hmm. one. Now, here's the issue, though. <clears throat> if there is such a model that is being used with sufficient clarity and judgment, even though it let us not, we can either say it's perfect as it is or it needs improvement or under those conditions. Let's put that aside. <clears throat> Does that present then the student who, is, who understands that model that therefore they can use it widely from that point on into any other activity? Hmm. If they understand it. Yes. Who I knows? That's an interesting question, though. Any and other go another, si another side of it is, is it possible they cannot? Yeah. <laughs> well. Or would that frame their way of understanding from that point on? Well, uh, hmm. I would speak from personal experience to the small degree that I've understood pieces of the Parmenides. I see it reflected in the way that I think in my daily life. So yeah. I, to that small degree, I can only extrapolate out. What if I understood the whole thing and yeah. perfectly? I don't think it, I could help but have it in, inform my thinking. I See, it, it, push the implications of that. By the way, <clears throat> yeah. I understand you're interested possibly in teaching. Yes. But what is an open question so far? <laughs> but isn't this the ideal thing you want to teach? Yes. Yes, I'll be back in 150 years after I <laughs> start some classes. <laughs> but wouldn't that be an object, of, yeah. a good object for study? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, especially okay. with your degree. <laughs> I'll have especially, some guest speakers every now and then. <laughs> especially with your degree in anthropology. You could step, and there's an area called philosophical anthropology. You know, you could study those cultures which recognize the self. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 add to it. Come on. All those many that cultures. Sure that, that, no, no. that one culture. No. <laughs> you go ahead. You'd want to make cultural anthropology that includes not only that they have a place and a role for the self, but also utilize a model of a logos. Mm -hmm. Right, right. what does that do? What would it do, Jeff? <laughs> I mean, they would go together. You'd probably see that they occur together. Yeah. Or, um, or, or they better catch up. Or they're looking for each other. <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, see, in the Tibetan literature, mm -hmm. the idea of the self is expressed very profoundly, but they have no model. Hmm. If we're talking about a model such as is being strictly employed, yeah, that yeah. you've discovered in. Uh, right. By the way, what difference has it made to you to uh, grapple and see to that degree the logos in Parmenides' hypothesis? What's it done to you? Whoa! <laughs> it's made me think of myself as more important than I did before. So yeah. I could act more from myself. Yeah. It's really been important. See, it's connected with the self. Yeah. It's not just a theoretical Therefore, it's, something, a, something. It, it's a logo of the self. Yeah. Right, and I, I, I Rather speak. Rather than some independent system. Yeah. It's a logo of the self. Right. And I can speak more freely and truthfully since I've been studying it, so... Are you planning on doing some more of that stuff? I hope so. Oh, good. Is yeah. it cheap? <laughs> I don't know. I seem to be spending <laughs> yeah, more money. Pay, you have to pay a price. It seems like it's... <laughs> there it but it's better. Say, uh, but by chance, have you thought of being a teacher? Um, well, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It went, if you're thinking about a teacher, were you thinking about utilizing this in your teaching? Well, yeah. Oh, would you also add uh, meditation? Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't like to think about really the teaching part. Just no, 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 you don't have to. You already thought about it. We noticed that. <laughs> you already thought about it. You don't have to think about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Like you would like to be a teacher. Well, I'd like to write about that's stuff. Not, that's teaching. And then teach, yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, why do you hold back from working with people since you use the idea you probably use writing rather than speaking? Oh. Well, that's a good question, yeah. Yeah, that's why I asked him. Why do I Um What more do you have to... I think it's some kind of a, a wall I'm putting up. Like I'm saying, I have to write first and then we can talk about that. That doesn't oh, make as sense. A, as a way of keeping it from yourself. Well, uh, yeah, it seems yeah, like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're satisfied with that? No, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. So you could both, you could I talk about it and write about it. Yeah, but I think you'd actually want to do the face-to-face -face first and oh, then oh, oh, oh. get it out there maybe. And yeah. Like, oh. well, well, why don't you try one out with oh, Miss? God. Yes. Uh, we like to engage uh, <laughs> Julie, the teacher, in uh, one of your questions about meditation, philosophy, life, and death, or anything else? Sure. Go ahead, I'll listen. <laughs> you would. Yeah. 
Make it a yes or no question, okay? <laughs> good I like it. <laughs> That's thinking on your feet. Are, are you a teacher of meditation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you interested in that? Yeah. You've heard about meditation? Yes. So, um... What? What? No, 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 I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to make sure it's the... <laughs> I, can't with, I can't go with yes or no. Okay. Oh, no. So, um, so you're familiar with the uh, highest uh, state one can reach via meditation? No. I wouldn't say that. But you are Why wouldn't you do that? She wants to know. But she she says I only... What? Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, Why can I only ask you yes or no? Because <laughs> I'm... Afraid what makes you put, think you're not familiar with the highest? Okay. Because so, I'm afraid... Come on. Come I'm afraid to look foolish by saying too much. Oh, you're worried about being foolish. Yeah, I'm saying too much. Looking like I like, like you know. I know something when I don't. But you do know something. Mm. Mm, I guess. <laughs> but what do we be if I know? It would be foolish. <laughs> would it be foolish? Well, okay. So I want to say s- s- to clarify. Okay. If by meditation you mean you know, the state, <laughs> the highest. Um, the, let's see, the most, let's see, I mean, by meditation, I understand it to mean the, your, your attention, your, um, meditation, awareness, your awareness. Just of anything? Of what is the object of your meditation. So, um, to, so if you think of the most, um, so if you think, thank you, if you think of, um, I don't know how to how to make the transition from that to like the most brilliant light of being, or seeing yourself, or not being aware of yourself or like and not being aware of yourself is a rather interesting state isn't it yeah by the way is that the self thank you very much yeah you have two selves going you know Mm -hmm. well yeah Mm -hmm. being aware without an idea of the self. By the way, could you call that the self? And you said, yeah. So you have two ideas of self then. Yeah, because... Do you want to do that? Well, I mean, it's like... I like that little froggy. It's a bird. A bird? Um, Yeah, like a little frog toad. Um, like suddenly I, I thought, well, it's the self that's aware of the no self. Yeah, that's a, that's a theory. So you put that forward. The self is aware of the no self. But what I want to do actually is try to find out, and this is maybe my a problem that I do, but I'm trying to find out what it, what it is she's trying to find out. Well, you have to ask her. I, I can't help you with that. Okay, so see, now I'm going to turn it upon you. And yes. maybe that's just a bigger, well, clever... Maybe, maybe you are. I'm looking for a, teach, a, a meditation teacher uh-huh. who can um, teach me how to teach me not from from what you said, not just 
from what you said, everyone's meditating because they're all you're all aware. Well, what's the oh in different degrees, yeah, and and to different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, what is the highest right. meditation, and how does one achieve that if you if you are teaching that? Right. So the highest degree of meditation or awareness would be to realize the meditator himself, itself. To be aware of that. So that doesn't, what do you think about that? Your question was, you, what's the highest state of meditation? But yes, what is the highest object of meditation, if it's an mm. object? And you're saying for the meditator to be aware of him or itself. For the meditation, yeah. And mm -hmm. Well, everyone has an idea of their self. So, right. what do you mean when you say that? Himself or itself? Uh huh. Uh, stay on the job. Um. Well, would you agree that when you are meditating on something, that there is? that you're aware of yourself meditating? No. <laughs> okay. Um, so what is, uh -huh. Go ahead. So what is it that... Uh, mm -hmm. Do you deal with what you're saying or not? Are you going to ignore it? Huh. I feel like I can't deal with it. So, well, I won't tell you give up, then. Mm. Or call in Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you're stuck, let us know you're yeah, stuck. You're stuck. Oh. oh. That's because you're not paying attention to the words, see? Keep them, re repeat them. She said, no, not everybody's aware of the who's meditating. When I'm meditating, am I aware of myself? Meditating. That's the point she's making. How can she be aware of herself while she is meditating? Are they not different? Literally, can she be meditating on the self if she has an idea of the self, meditating on the self. Like, how much, how much of that statement presupposes a certain class of experience? Or is it just a, a set of terms that are confusing to put together? Uh, it, it would require a lot of unpacking to put a, those terms together. So I'm presuming she's got a high level of experience the way I'm talking to her right now. Good luck. Why is that? Because then I don't have to deal with anything yeah. in between. In fact, please do get out of it. Yeah. That's getting out of the discussion. Though. And then I can just kind of say, well, I guess she doesn't get it. Right. <laughs> That's not fair. No. No. Oh. So my next one. Well, well, okay, well, so my next line of thinking is, why does she have this question anyway? Well, she doesn't know that. That's why she's asking. 
Hmm. So have you tried meditation? Let's see. I mean, so you do you have a goal in meditation? Or? Now you're going somewhere else. Now okay. you're going on another track and you're giving up the very idea that we're involved in. So, when you're meditating, whatever you call it, yeah. are you aware of the self meditating? <clears throat> that means there's something that you're watching, doing something. I am sometimes aware of myself meditating. Is that what you call a high degree of meditation or not? No. Then I'd say I've slipped out of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What did you just see? That when you're aware of yourself doing anything, you are not being yourself. Oh. Is that a basis down you might return to that question now? Since what she asks is, she's putting forward the idea that one can be in a state of meditation and be aware of the self meditating on the self. No, I did not put forth that. Okay, point. put it your turn. She, she asked me. me if, wait, she asked me if I was aware of the self yeah. meditating, and I said no. Good. So how is that? Well, forget what I said. You can pick it up from what you're doing. Okay. So I, and I said no. Like what, how would you put it the way you expressed it before, so that it's more accurate? So, so when I am meditating, okay, I am not aware of myself as meditating. Thank you. Meaning, I am aware of something watching, something, something. I can't identify where it is. Nor would, nor can I say. That's what I'm aware of. But I can't. Have the question: Is that myself? I don't <coughs> say. Oh, there's myself. So, in that sense, I am not aware of. However, you do have the question of what is the watcher or what is the self. So you do away with the question, but you still have it because it presupposes that there is a watcher watching, and that's the self. Say that again. My question mm -hmm. presupposes that. Yeah. Mm. By the way, when you say there's, you're wondering about the watcher watching. Because that's my experience. Pardon. We're raising the question whether that is true, whether that is mm -hmm. in your experience or not, literally. Yes, yes that's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Because the way you are expressing it, not the experience, mm -hmm. the way you are expressing what you call your experience, right. does presuppose a self-watching, doesn't it? Yes, yes. But it however, does. your original statement is you saw that there was no need to have an idea of self in meditating. Right, if you try to describe it, period. Oh. Okay. So, therefore, the question you have during this period called meditation is what is watching? Is Ill illegitimate. Mm. Since you are resurfacing what you just described as not being true. Yeah, that's what I So behind your idea of the self is something that does something that one might experience.
but reflection. But reflection that is not the experience. Right. Yes. Okay. So you're holding a position at odds okay. with your actual yes. reflection yes. meditation. Yes. Oh, yes. Did that help? Yeah. Did that help? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, she said. Yes. Subspace transmission happens. See, but, the idea yeah. of the self will wiggle itself in, in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. Very amazing. Mm -hmm. But once you spot it, what happens? Don't let it go. You don't let it go. Now your meditation will be different. Yeah, right. By the way, <clears throat> you mind if I ask you a different question? Okay. Uh, I'm sitting next to a teacher, so I thought oh, I'm kind of she's, I'm brushing it off. Yeah, yeah. 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 Why do you think you need to meditate? Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah, exactly. I agree. <laughs> Pardon me. Do you know what you agree to? I don't. Do you know? Why do you need to meditate? Yeah, that question. So no, get, get pursue it. Oh, only if uh, only if uh, you need a reminder, I guess. <laughs> What? I guess you need a reminder. I like that. I, mean, I need a reminder. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what do you mean? To remind you that what? Nothing is watching? No, that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that you slipped out of that you slipped out of um, slipped out of what is slipped out of hmm. so therefore do you have any question about meditation <sighs> no there see you lost the student <laughs> That's the trouble with this game. You yeah, need students. good. Phew. Check right? her off. She won't be back. Well, well, and here you are trying to be a teacher, and there's no student <laughs> for a teacher good. that doesn't have a teacher that's on this level. Well, that's what I say. I actually am the advisor to a club at school that has no members. So now I. We <laughs> 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 the social that? science club. What? The social science club at Fullerton College. Zero members. <laughs> but I'm the advisor, so now I can say I have I'm a teacher with no students too, so that's okay, by the way. This dialogue that we went through, is it possible that's consistent with this idea that we spoke about a short while ago is following the logos? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we are following very strictly terms, are we not? Right. But that may be consistent with this idea that we were talking about in the class about the need for a to spot and the necessary model and the communities. Say that last part to you. The necessary model, following the necessary model in the community. So following the logos that, that was at play in this conversation mm -hmm. is the same as following or is comparable to yes. following the We need to the spot logos. the model in yeah. the community. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yes. that's what I actually, mm -hmm. that's the question that, that I had was, Good. well, because you ask whether um, we could make use of, I'm going to say, the, what we learn in the Parmenides about the Logos and the self in our daily life, yeah. in everything. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I followed the part about Alto, mm -hmm. but I was looking for the method, a method, because that was how it was described. But if the method is to follow a logos, right. then it's not as, I thought it was going to be kind of specific. Like, is yourself, does yourself have a figure <laughs> or something? Sorry. Mm -hmm. But you see, that would follow if a person was holding that, by the way, there really is a self that's watching. We yes. would say, gee, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, if you, uh, do you recognize it right away, or does it take you some time to put it together? Mm -hmm. They would probably say... Recognize it immediately. Oh, if you recognize it immediately, do you use the word recognize in a loose way in which we often use it? I don't know. What is the Which is that I recognize we... a variety of things, and I can separate one from the other because and each one has a certain kind of shape and form. 
and figuration. What's the alternative to that? Well, then if one isn't using it that way, then one isn't using the word recognize in the normal way in which one uses that word. Okay, so I guess I'm using it in the normal way, since yeah. I don't have an alternative. Yeah, so therefore, if that's someone says they do recognize that there is a self that's watching, uh -huh. we would say, good, would you mind telling me what figure it has? Ah, okay. Since everything I recognize, therefore, presupposes I'm able to make a figure of it, Right, I could draw a picture of it, right? Each of these things has a boundary. I take your Matter point. of fact, all of these things are just diagram. We could diagrammatic everything on the table based upon straight lines and uh, circles, couldn't we? Yep. My other question, though, is everything, right? Yes. Everything in your daily life, not <coughs> simply the... Well, I thought it was, like, can you use it... So I started thinking about, can you use it when you're shopping? Can you use it when you're cleaning your house? Can you use it when you're studying cultural anthropology? Well, I had an exploration of it this morning. Nancy picked up an object that came into the house, and mm -hmm. she said, what do you think of this? And I was ready to tell her all the great things about it. Uh -huh. And she said, shut up. Really? What and, a tough broad. Yeah. No, but she did it politely. She oh, said, good. You know, she did you find out? Just dismissed me and said, "Care to read the contents hmm. on the label of this object that hmm. I was admiring?" Hmm. And it was a description of honey. Oh, I was impressed by it. She turned around. She said, "Pierre, take a look. It's made with artificial flavors." Oh my God! Really? I'm so sorry to hear that. No. It's one of those little packages. No, no, it was a, a it was um, Mayer lemon honey. It was beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I just, beautiful. I didn't even look to see if it had real Mayer lemon in it. Does it have any, or is it all artificial? As far no, as that's as far as the discussion went, and that put me in my. I said, oh, oh. Yeah. So you were asking, is there a common experience we can apply where we're using this kind of model, right? Therefore, I'm assuming that that label does contain something that corresponds to its contents and can adequately describe it without distorting it, either the, uh, the way it was manufactured or the particular contents within the package. Okay, so what we're talking about now is the non-interpretation function. That's right. And that assumes a lot of things that I was mentioning I do in not... In the everyday life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Like... Would you agree Jeff is into uh, playing the piano now in a certain way? Playing the piano now? I don't know. Well, he, oh, before you got here. Ah. Yeah. After <laughs> and he, oh, okay. he mentioned that there's a difference in the way in which he's playing it now and the way he had done before. Uh -huh. Would we not want to know whether or not the role of a model is playing a role in that and whether it's a similar model to the model in the Parmenides? Sure. Well, you ask him about oh. it and I'll listen. I will not be able to. <laughs> and the reason I won't be able to compare it is because what I don't. What is the model in the Parmenides or the Logos? Well, right now we have following the Logos, right? And we have the description of applying it to the label of the honey jar. You have your midwifery talk and your experience post midwifery talk that we could call a testing of your insight with respect to the piano playing. Yeah, but is that following a logos? Sure. We I'm glad you asked me a yes and no question. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> we could even ask the question without that word. Without logos? Yeah. Okay, and then go sneak ask it, away, my friend. Sneak it in later. <laughs> like, hey. Oh. Was it like following the... <coughs> <laughs> Yourself? Sorry. Like, would you agree there are two different states of playing the piano? Before and now? Yes. How do you account for the difference? Unblocked. Just unblocked? Well, uh, that's not enough, but... Mm. What more are you looking? Well, because unblocked. Uh, yeah, that's good. From what or 
could get. Hmm. Um, more patience, more steadfastness, more mm -hmm. desire to pursue excellence, even when I'd rather get up and have a cookie. Um, yeah. I stick with it anyway. Uh, and it's and to do so is not punishment or anything. It's just a desire to stick with it mm -hmm. and take it to a higher level. Um, to enjoy parts that seem more directly fun, but also endure the parts that seem necessary but not as fun, and to just move through the whole thing, seeing that it will, uh, that it is a path to excellence, and so I'm on it. Uh, Say, uh, could I ask you, are you familiar with this uh, Plato's Parmenides? Chai, yes. Uh, have you ever gotten into that similar state when you're reading? No. Well, okay. wait a while. Yes, for brief, for brief, yes, for brief moments. What would you conclude about that then? That I want to go back to the Parmenides more and, and, and test it and see if I can lengthen those amounts of time where I'm in yeah. that state. We now want to sneak in the word logos. See, are you not following? Mm. Thanks. Some ideas which you called excellence. Mm. Therefore, it, perhaps the idea of this model presupposes <coughs> excellence. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are getting, curiously enough, a growing understanding of the logos. I think yep. he should go further with his description. <laughs> be, well, because I think that when you say, for example, to be more patient or to endure what is the necessary or to enjoy the rest, <laughs> um, something missing? Uh, something missing. Um, well, I mean, I didn't also include... Um, like, for example, can you focus on one of those moments where you were patient? Or really any of them? I want to learn a new skill. In this, I'm focusing on a particular uh -huh. moment. Um, he's having me do some arpeggios with the left hand. Uh, I know what key I'm in. I know what chord is being played. I know what relevance that chord has to the key. First, fourth, fifth, seventh, etc. Uh -huh. um, but he teaches multiple ways to embellish that same chord okay. in different ways. And I say to myself, I don't like the sound so much of that particular one. I like the other ones better. But I say to myself anyway, nonetheless, <clears throat> um, when I'm improvising someday in jazz down the line in a mall or at someone's house or just for myself, I may find that I use that particular embellishment and it comes out spontaneously because I've added it on as a skill. So I'll, I'll take it on. I'll, I'll do it even though, to me, it doesn't, it's not as fun as the other embellishments, but I'll, I'll add that to my toolkit, sure. Is there a moment between realizing you don't like it and realizing that it may have a future application? I missed the first couple words. Is there a difference? A, a moment. A moment of difference between those two? Well, I... <clears throat> Yeah, there is a there, it is it is a time sequential thing. Yeah, they're different. They are separated in time. Can you talk about how that what that transition is, or how that transition takes place? Mm. <laughs> I don't know, but wait. Uh, let me. I like that question. Sure. Because that question seems to me a form of gap. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with that because yeah, it isn't what I have to. Oh, I can yeah. still let him get it. Speak more. Yeah. Speak more. Okay. Because or further. 
because I don't know where I went in between those two moments. I just know that I decided. But what decided and when and mm. why, I don't know. It's like everything, it's one of those blackout moments. It's just, next thing you know, you're taking a left instead of a right. And I think but, that's what I meant by unblocked. I just, I just decided, hey, you know, go with it. Enjoy it. You know, take it on. Um, I like the point about You may about find that you like it more than, mm. than you initially did. Mm. Maybe that was, in fact, even a, a reassessment of my earlier judgment. Uh, you know, th this additional skill may go somewhere that I don't see right now. So mm -hmm. add it on right now. It's fine. Add mm -hmm. it. Um, doesn't mean I always have to use that embellishment. I'm not locked into it. But do I want to add it to my tool belt because a teacher I respect and admire and, uh, for his knowledge and his method is saying that it's good to have and it's foundational? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, I don't know if that adds <laughs> enough for you. Well, I, I found it really interesting that you said you don't know um, yeah, I'm what just, decided. Was that yeah, what you said? It's, that's, that's all so after. In this, in, light of the discussion we had have it, or having now, right? Well, it seems to me that that in itself is a reflection of excellence. That, the, that being? That change, that decision, that gap, hmm. that difference hmm. that I would not have done before. Hmm. And I, I tried putting words on it, but I noticed that all the words I put on it were after the fact. Okay, and they were such words as? Well, everything I just described okay. in oh, terms okay. of seeing the value of it, changing my mind, you know, mm -hmm. going with the teacher. Seeing uh, the value but, of the, but the exact moment of the change mm -hmm. is invisible to me. Hmm. Or, that's the right word. Pierre said something, but I w I'm not good at reading this. Oh, is that... Following a, a logos? Yeah. Um, yes, it is. Yeah. But is it a Parmenidean oneself logos? Mm. I don't know. But you but you certainly are seeing its usefulness. In, in finding parallels yes. in another field of sure. excellence. Yes, but what's interesting about it is um, the word usefulness. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit interesting, if Isn't not it? problematic mm -hmm. or challenging. Puts you in a different place. Yes. Now you now you can wonder about what to do, what it is, what what you have come to. <laughs> yeah, told <laughs> you, you said that you we, we talked about the fact that you don't know what decided or who decided. Do you know who didn't like the idea? Didn't like the. Uh, <laughs> is it I, a I, contrast question? No, I like that question too. Um, I'm not sure. I get immediately two answers come to mind for mm -hmm. me. One is uh, the old self. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. I saw that. See, that's answer. what I was wondering about. Your that's good. I, I didn't see the higher, but I, I saw that that might be true. Okay. That's what you but were... But you could go ahead. That, no, that's what I was curious about. I was just curious. Because, um... Yeah. That was the know. old self. Nice yeah, and that. Thank you for taking me there. That's, that's a good way to put it. Huh. Mm -hmm. So in a way, is that a counterattack? Is that a counterattack? The original it. old self coming in? Yeah, I think it is. I think, but the thing is that you were as we all work through midwiferies, we see the old things coming up, but we yeah. we recognize them for what they are. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. So you have that freedom yeah. to choose now. Now you have the yeah. freedom to. Before yes. you were just yeah. locked in. Yeah. 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 Before I was locked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and just beat yourself up with piano instead of anything. Beating right? myself up with piano. That's right. That's what it was. Yeah. I know that because I beat myself up with toe. Okay. All right, Dr. G. Thank you. Uh, uh.
power things? It's okay. Okay. <laughs> the doctor is in. Five cents. Or, or where is the doctor? This is why I love Amino. Because mm. you now, you were like Amino. You thought you knew something. And then you were empty for a moment. And now that the moment came up, you could jump back into seeing what's outside of that block. You could actually be puzzled or wonder. Like you could come back to being a learner. Like come back to actually following what you were practicing and being brave in that moment. Like I like that too, actually. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. Just there was an article in the in the Guardian. And it was about this woman who had suffered from severe psychosis, I, I, you know, fear, panic attacks, all that kind of stuff. And she, one day, she woke up and she, she could let it all drop. And it was on the basis of asking herself, is it true, you know, the fear? Is, do, are you absolutely sure it's true? What, what does it do to you and what would it be like if you didn't have it? Right, like what? What is the consequence of that fear? And, and apparently, she's now given thousands of lectures where she takes people okay. through four questions. Yes. And I found I found that interesting because, in a way, it's like a mini a mini experience of she's trying to get them to see uh, themselves without the problem. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it's is it healing for people. Yeah. And she's English, right? I think so. Yeah, the guardian here. I could. Oh, what did you say? I, 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 from that, I, I think. There's another girl, Jennifer Lowe or something, who came out. She's bipolar hmm. and PTSD, and she's talking um, about similar stuff. I think she was. I think she had an English accent. So hmm. that was the same yeah, she had a bunch of YouTube. Th this one had a bunch of YouTube you could go see. Yeah. But I thought the four questions were enough, so I didn't go. What, what was your point other than that? That was interesting to me. Just that I had seen her too, but I didn't get your four questions. No, it's, it's, it's a four, different. Well, the four. Oh, the four questions were: Is, is whatever you, this terrifying thing you're seeing, right? Is it true? Hmm. And the second question was, are you absolutely sure it's true? And the third question is, what what happens to you in the course? What do you what do you like? I think it's what is your state on viewing this thing? And the last one is, what would you be like if you didn't have it? You know, if it was. Mm -hmm. And apparently, people go into a state. Uh, it, I, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. because it's very powerful for people that it's it, they get to see uh, themselves without the problem, mm -hmm. and that that in itself apparently is very therapeutic. So she, from this one moment when she woke up without her demons, apparently it was such a case where her, cha her daughter was afraid of her, her family, I mean that she would really act out these horrifying scenes in her home with her family. But from the moment she woke up clear of it, she was able to s distinguish and then communicate, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it said she went... understanding. Without understanding the source of it, yeah, I, I know, think. Like, yeah, well, we would call it understanding. So you're asking her to give evidence. Right. They're asking themselves to give evidence mm -hmm. for the truth of their projection or whatever yeah. it is, yeah. of their self-image, of their yeah. paralyzing yeah. psychosis. Yeah. I don't ever get the right psychology term. No. I should work no, on it. No. It speaks to the power of the logos again. Like, yep. whenever I have students who come up to me and are confused or tell me their problems, I almost always just give them a space to talk. And within like four to five minutes, mm -hmm. they figured out exactly what they need to do to the, for their problems. And they just didn't have a space to put logos on it. Like, and without that, they're trapped. But also, like, you use the word seeing, right? Well, she tells them to. I don't know. I don't know uh, if she used. I just thought briefly this morning. I don't know if she says to imagine or to visualize the. Se no, she doesn't say visualize. Well, I thought she. So she, she must was say. Not able to see herself free of that. She. That's what she tells everybody to do. But yeah, she saw again. herself free. Of that. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. She woke up one morning. It sounds like those people who have spontaneous enlightenment experiences. Mm -hmm. So she had some kind of spontaneous experience of reality. So such that she was able to then say, of anything that came up for her, is it true? 
is it absolute? Do you, mm-hmm. you know that it's absolutely true? And that second question is interesting. It's not just is it true, but can you, it, it, right? Is there no way in which it could be false? And then what does it do to you? And then what would you be like without it? I think it's what would you be like without it, but I'd have to look at it again. I just found, found the sequence of four well, very interesting. That's really powerful. I think just because it sounds so similar, mm. you know, that she has developed a whole system and she she has workshops and yes. things like that. She was at Esalen. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. I, I can get yeah, the name sure of yeah, I, I know. Just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you, by any chance, uh, was there any chance of digging that link up? Yes, because I just saw it this morning. Yeah. But I just kind of briefly looked at it in passing. and um, Guardian UK or something? It's Guardian, yeah. And I usually go and look at the news and then I look at lifestyle. But it might have been in either place. But I'm sure I can find it in my uh, you know, search history. So if you can't. But I'll find it and I'll send it out to everybody. Yeah. Well. Okay. Search link. So we were talking about interpretation. Then Jeff's logos, the way he described it, would that be non-interpretation? Non He's just uh, doing it. You asked. We were looking for interpretation. So I took it that what Jeff described was not an interpretation. Just now? Yeah. He tried to be clear with the state of mind that he was in and putting words on it. Well, but it's clearly not an interpretation since he's not trying to represent something mm. different than his own authorship. Okay, then taking that and doing anything with it. Doing that. Taking what he said ah. and describing it would be an, uh, apart from using his words, would be an interpretation. Uh, that is, I, uh, I don't follow that when you inserted those words. words. When would it be interpretation? Well, he's not doing something at that moment where he's trying to represent something. <clears throat> That's the beginning of interpretation. That's the condition for interpretation. <clears throat> you have to have something in front of you that you want to give an account of. Are you talking about you're going to tell somebody else now what he said? You're going to... No. That's adding to confusion. You want to give it another shot? I'm kind of curious. You might have had a good question in there, but I didn't follow it. Probably my fault. and put different words on the same question so I can follow? Well, Phil made it clear that what you were describing wasn't a form of interpretation because you're the author of the one mm-hmm. and you're trying to describe your experience. And mm-hmm. is that, am I following? So far. Thanks. And so that wouldn't be a form of interpretation. And I asked, that wouldn't be interpretation. What? what are you questioning? But, uh, I guess I'm not following you on what you just said. What is it that you need to Just say it again. I'll listen more carefully. That that's not interpretation. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I asked him, okay, what would be interpretation then? And he said that it would be um, taking that, that there isn't uh it's, that's puzzling. I, you said something about the fact that it was that there wasn't an object of which he was describing. And 
I lost it at that point because I took it as saying he is trying to describe his experience. Would that would that be in the best way he could uh, a logos or is that a form of interpreting? I'm puzzled about that. <coughs> so that's very puzzling because you're trying to ex talk about the experience you have, trying to use words to describe it in the best way possible. At what point then do you know it's not interpreting, interpreting that experience? You're using the word interpreting experience just now. Yeah, when, when do you... Pardon me, you agree that's the terms you're using? I'm using interpreting and experience, yes. Uh, and or interpreting in experience, not and, no. and those are separate subjects. No, I didn't say in experience. <laughs> but Pierre, I think, I think I get what she's doing. I think she's trying to take like we would all agree that what you said earlier is certainly true that under your definition of the word interpretation you have to have someone else's text let's call it a text um, and you have to add or subtract to or from that and that has to be because the reason you're doing that is for two reasons a you have a pathologos and b that pathologos prevents you from seeing what the person is really saying uh, as I understand, or said in one in the document, yeah, in, in that text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I followed all the points, mm -hmm. and I think I see what Regina is trying to do. Maybe you can tell me if I'm checking me off. If I'm, I think what she's trying to say is: Is it possible to take that definition of interpretation and move it and expand it into including those types of things where you're exper you're you're putting an explanation on your own experience? But because you don't have a high enough understanding of your own experience, you add or subtract via a path of logos and come to a different conclusion incorrectly. So she's trying to take interpretation in, with, without someone else's text and apply it to one's own experience. And it seems to me that if that's what you're asking, you or added playing it, with, you added the idea of the yes. But and if that, I, don't want to, I don't want to change it. Okay, so if that is what she's playing with, the, the possibility of doing it seems to me that the answer would be yes. We do that all the time. And that's how we started out our conversation today is uh, uh, the necessary need for having dialogue, for having another person, because otherwise we're just in our own box. We can't escape, right? It, it requires midwifery to get us out of, of that interpretation of our own events, that incorrect addition or subtraction. Well, it's also those, those that literature on when people have enlightenment experiences, they often say that they saw God or they saw Jesus or Jesus mm -hmm. is in their heart or whatever. Those are all interpretive mm -hmm. of the actual experience. Right? Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of easy. So would you answer? Then they are using something other than the experience yes. to add to their right. experience mm -hmm. that is not contained in their experience, right, right. and that qualifies for interpretation. So then, what, if you're saying that qualifies for interpretation, my, my guess is that your answer to Regina is yes, you would abide that expansion of the definition of interpretation. No. That's not just unless it. it is including things that are not contained. Well, of course, because that's the adding. No. Yeah. Okay. I think that's pretty classic, by the way. I don't think it's Pierre's view of interpretation. At least when I used to get my, take my students through Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives, interpretation is when you give it your own spin. Yeah. It's se separate from um, translation. They talk about translation meaning trying to be pure with the elements of whatever it is you're looking at, mm -hmm. but interpretation is where you make a new whole of it, yeah. otherwise known as the English literature approach. Yeah, but what I, and I like knowing that, thank you, 
But what I think what we all like about Pierre, certainly I do, what I like about his is he's been more precise than the textbook definition by adding pathologos, by adding the fact that you can't not only add but subtract, by adding that you... But I think that's that included in that whole idea of spinning, adding and subtracting. No, I just mm -hmm. saying you were, sure, it seems it to me you were specifying it was only his. And nice. while it's an elegant articulation, I just wanted to say it's not aberrant, well, you know, or... Yeah, no, no, I, I didn't, and I, I'm glad you did that because it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't my point to do that. Okay. But the reason I like his is because he's, he has specified those uh, necessary characteristics. He's unpacked that thing that so that's allowed us to then say, well, you know, how applicable is, is what Regina's idea is in playing with in a way that we wouldn't have been able to do with the generic textbook version, even though you're quite right, it, when you look at it, as Pierre has, it's, it's all in there. See, the, 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 the problem mm -hmm. with we saw today <clears throat> is that someone can make an account of what they call their experience that is not in their experience at all. <laughs> They've added. Okay, so that would be... Wait, which one are you right. referring to? Uh, Nancy. <laughs> so, Nancy is a, so, the, 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 so when Jeff? people talk about experience, for me, you know, I sit back and I say to myself, here comes a mix. Here comes a mix. <laughs> some true and some added. Maybe some subtracted. Very few people can describe their experience. Mm. Mm. If you mean by that, not adding anything to it, or being able to represent it with clarity. Mm. Okay. I think this um, might, might have been, I, I have a, a memory of you years ago, uh, we were chit-chatting chit around at a Friday night at, at the old 10th Street Women's Club and you were mentioning how for the most part, uh, you avoid autobiographies. Good. I've, autobiographies. You, you were saying you, you avoid, avoid them. them. You avoid because reading them, I because think. They are, I suppose they're not subscribing, because just describing their own experience because no. they can't even recognize their own experience when they're trying to describe it. Um, what's the point you were making with that? It's just, it's just, uh, if I, I, no, there's no point other than it supports your point. Ah. Which was your point in the first place? <laughs> When you said very few people can describe their experience... Well, that's not true. <laughs> it's very, very few. <laughs> and infinitesimally small. By very few, do you mean no one? Or... I didn't say no one. Okay. Very, very so, is this same person able to do midwifery themselves? It's impossible. So they can describe their experience accurately? No. no. In, in reality, no. Well, you just said, I'm talking about one of those very, very few people. Oh, so thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. So that person no. can accurately describe their experience, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. But they can't midwife themselves. Worse than that, there's no need to. Right. That's kind of what I was directed, directing towards because... So we would have to assume that they had already been through a midwife talk in order to be able to achieve that? Either that or some gift of the gods. Right, okay. Okay, so... Okay. Thanks. That's fine. Do we have any autobiographies of these few? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> right. I've, I've read a couple, not many. Do you like you to think of... What? Would you like to list, uh, enumerate yeah, any? There, there, there. They have a certain curiosity, but mm. uh, so you, you but, not only need someone who doesn't interpret, you need someone who is interesting enough to read uninterpreted, right? Yeah. I mean, that has some reach in the world of mm. wisdom or something, right? I mean, it would seem to me, right? Mm -hmm. it, it would be, mm -hmm. Unless you're getting like the guy with the pack on the thing walking back into the village talking about his encounters with the <laughs> innkeepers and uh, fishermen or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Then that'd be, that'd be interesting. Well, I've read Muktanandas. Mm -hmm. ah. I was thinking about <clears throat> feeling you were going to say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Autobiography Yogi. Yeah. Mm. And uh, hmm. uh, what you 
Unfortunately, in my youth, I read uh, St. Augustine's Confession. Uh-oh, that does not sound like he's in the same class. <laughs> so if so it, what? But it, but it seems like uh, there are a couple of uh, corollaries that come out of this uh, issue of uh, most, most, most of us being unable to describe our actual experience. First of all, it seems that um, that uh, a few Saturdays ago you mentioned to us a very nice idea that um, that most of us pay attention to the particulars in our day when actually looking back on the day's events we should be looking at um, the ideas, the logos particularly, states of mind and so forth rather than particulars like I went to the store and so forth. Um, but even recalling those at the end of the day seems problematic. Sure. Because we're not seeing completely into them. I mean, that's the point, after oh. all, of reviewing sure. them. So, if the, if uh, if one were to engage in a practice like that of at the end of the day recalling. Uh, all the uh, events in terms of states of mind and logos and uh, what have you um, and how one was functioning abstracted from the particulars it seems as if uh, it would be more beneficial to review those with a second person sure. and to do that daily yeah. mm. see years ago <clears throat> and I dare say it was some. Uh, I was in New York and I got a cab and I'm having talk with a cab driver and uh, I said, well, what do you find most curious about the driving and meeting people all the time? So, because I, he had a very thick accent and I wasn't sure where he came from but I wanted to know what his view was of meeting all these people and he said he said he says you know what I'm glad you asked me that he said uh, he said in my culture he said uh, by the way I never called it a culture but I now know how to call it culture he says uh, uh, you know we don't use the word I we use the word we Mr. what we, we. Mm -hmm. he said you guys in the beginning of every sentence you're sticking an I he said, is, 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 is that something you experience? Because all we do is we have we, 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 we do. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That sounds complicated. Like my right left and my left leg together, we walk to the market. I mean, I don't, I don't entirely guess that. But, we. well, we I get, but no. we do not clean my house. We do not Maybe clean we my do. house. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. If there's one self. He may, in fact, come from a family where they use we all the time. Oh, absolutely. I'm not yeah. denying that. And culture. And he he's wants to know what what's behind the use of the word I. Mm. And why does it play such a dominant role in our culture? Mm. He says, you guys, every sentence you make, just stick that in front of it. Did you find out what his culture was? No, no, no I didn't. Uh, did you answer? Did his you question? answer me? Did, did oh, yeah, you answer yeah, yeah, it? No, I was enjoying it, so I, you know, I just continue this discussion. But hmm. uh, you see, here's a guy who's experiencing. I is. Yeah. And he's got a question about what's an exper What is an experience? Is the I in there? Well, you just stick it in there on the front of the sentence because you've been taught it. I like it. Right? You've been mm -hmm. taught English classes, you stick an I on the front of the sentence, it's what you speak English. He wants to know whether or not there is something there. Because for him, he said, he very seldom ever finds a need. He's just weird. And they have a we without parts. Pardon me? They have a we without parts. That's right. There's no or, in the well, I'm, I'm sure he once in a while might use it, but <laughs> but I was adding that to the idea of what we call experience. It's not pure, filtered. Mm. No. 
Because once you put it into words, you're doing a remarkable thing. You're ignoring what's there, and you're substitu substituting for it words, mm -hmm. which you do believe corresponds to what's here, or whatever, whatever here is. Yeah. But we do describe a true Logos, don't we? Like saying that there is Logos, and Logos has truth? The word yes. reality and no, <clears throat> the Logos doesn't have truth, but I, I understand your point. Uh, it's through the Logos one can reach truth. Okay. So they have a reality to them? Both. And then we can go through the way of a false Logos or a, a non-false Logos, yeah. an accurate Logos. Yeah. Seldom it's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it seems to me that this problem that Josh is mentioning, mentioning it, uh, we overlap with the second point I wanted to ask you about, which is really, I think it's the same thing. Um, it's going to present itself in midwifery and dream at work. Pardon me? It's going to, pre this problem presents all the time in midwifery and dream work. Sure. To the, to the midwife. Sure. Because what you get may or may not reflect accurately what they experienced. Of course. Of course. Matter of fact, rarely does it. <laughs> it's the source of their problem. <laughs> Well, so how do you, I mean, uh... What you're left with is, is statements. So, Jeff, are we born inadequate and need other people in order to do midwifery, and the gifts we get from Providence in the morning are not sufficient? And it was like, hey, here's a gift, but make sure you bring it to the guy in the corner down there, or the, <laughs> the woman on the corner down there has got this gift of midwifery. We were actually... Like, Quoting you earlier today before you got because you made that point last week, and I thought I thought it we yeah we thought it a good one. It's a wonder I have because Socrates says in the Mino again after he's emptied Mino he's like hey do you want to explore what is virtue I don't know what it is see, but I'm open to searching it with see, you and using the Mino there's always a difference between a person's statement of a dream and when they reflect upon it they add to it mm -hmm. things which they never uh, when they wrote it down even recalled right mm -hmm. until and asked. then they discover sometimes things of great value that they never even <clears throat> recognized when they woke up but only because of recollection uh -huh. but they had to be brought back to it and brought to wonder about it and put their mind on it and see what logos comes out and so uh, we're going back to the issue is how important is experience just by itself is that possible or isn't it always filtered through to present it in words <laughs> and cannot the words upon reflection even purify original statements answer is yes yeah <laughs> And clarify what the experience sure. actually was. Finally, yeah. If you're lucky, you get back I remember to this it. video you gave. It was called Similitude, and you put up the words "experience logos understanding," and you mm -hmm. drew like a little um, set of relationships between mm -hmm. the figure eights. Yeah. yeah, like that they took you back one to the other. Sure. And that they were each enriches the other. Hmm. Sorry, Josh. What are those three again? Logos. Um, I'm um, sorry, the first one was experience, second logos, third understanding. Experience, logos, understanding. Was logos set up as a mean term there? If you have two others. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was, it, I mean, was it set up as an analogy, experience is the logos, and logos is understanding? I don't remember it that way. Well, the figure eight, right, that's so why I was trying to, was it through the logos that the understanding reaches experience? You abandon your question. You started with, is could it be a mean term? I suggested you need two other terms. Right, and the two other terms were experience and understanding. I was trying to ask it, because you said that the figure eight, so, or what, who said it, but 
So the figure eight, I was trying to understand when it was written, was it set up like that the Logos reaches experience through understanding? No. So it's, so it's not, it wasn't written as like experience is the Logos, is Logos is understanding. It was just three words right next to each other. Okay. Uh, well, and I think no what answer. Pierre just said just now is, and each enriches the other. Right, sure. that's what I was trying to... Uh, so that sounds to, to me like, if each enriches the other, then each of those three has an equal relationship with the other two, that the, as they have with it. So it's not, that would answer your question, it's not a mean analogy. Because the relationship... But you have to have logos for understanding. Right? Of course. I don't know, actually. Well, what would you be understanding without Lotus? So I think you're right. I, I buy you it. You can have experience without understanding or without putting the accurate Logos on it. Sure. Hmm. Yes? Just as another thing, oh. on the... Um, there was that guy, Raymond Moody, that wrote that book, Life I, After Life, right. and everybody described their death exper near, near death experiences. Yes. And then in the book itself, people's interpretation mm. of that experience, so you can see that contrast, the experience that right. they had mm. doesn't fit their interpretation. They, it was Jesus, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they put it in whatever right. their religious or background is right. to under, try to understand it. But it didn't fit the experience, mm -hmm. your interpretation. That's a fun book for sure. to see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we should ask Julie if she's going to be a midwife rather than uh, mm, teacher. a teacher. Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Well, that, she agrees. Thank, kind of, thank, thank, like, thank, 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 thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Thanks, Pierre. Yeah. Fine, yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank Gina. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Later. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good. Thank you, sir. Good. Regina. Josh, handshake. Yeah. 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 Do you think I can get one? Yes. Okay, good. This stuff is so tasty. Yeah.